Stuart Haas Racing rolls into next year. Brad Gilly, I've got to say, with a, I feel like, unproven lineup. And one of those is an asterisk. We feel like Noel Gregson's headed to the 10 car, even though as we're recording this, there's not been an official announcement. Yeah, you know, what's interesting to me, and look, uh, I'm always trying to find the positive and I'm always optimistic about a lot of things, is that, yes, Stuart Haas Racing lost Kevin Harvick. I mean, here's a guy who's a champion, a 60-time race winner, all of his accomplishments that we've talked about. But I have to wonder if the chemistry changing at that race shop is going to make a big difference. Not that Kevin Harvick was bad for chemistry, but now you've got just a little bit of a different alignment of people. You've got a very young Josh Berry who has got his first full-time Cup Series ride, who I feel like has proven himself inside of a Cup car as well with everything that he did filling in for Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman and the things that happened in 2023. You know, with Noah Gregson, with uh, Chase Briscoe, who's still a very young driver as well, um, and just all the different things that they've got going on over there i actually feel pretty optimistic about it here's a team that did not win a single cup race in 2023 think about that Stuart haas racing did not even win a single cup race in 2023 but i think with a much younger and hungry lineup there's great potential there for 2024 you know it's so interesting that you say that brad because that's the first time i've actually thought about it that way when you take drivers who all come from a similar background or have a similar way of thinking instead of, you know, an, say an old school driver and a new driver, um, that could potentially help the chemistry, right? Well, I know, Doug, you were going to call for this cut, but I think I'm going to call for it because it makes sense in the conversation we're having now. Um, listen to Ryan Priest talk about Josh Berry joining the team. I enjoy being around him a lot already. I think the biggest thing is I have a lot of respect for him before I even really know him, and that's because of you know, our upbringing, how we've had to earn our way to this point and do the things that we've done. Yeah, I mean, just listen to that cut right there, and he, he talks exactly about what you were just mentioning. Um, you know, and, and you also have the fact that you know, if Noah Gregson does go to the 10 car, you have the chemistry that's already been built there with Josh and Noah running together at Junior Motorsports for as long as they did. So there are certainly things on the horizon for that team um, that I think could be positives and could make uh, a difference in the performance that we see on the racetrack going forward. But you know, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. But I, I think there's more positives than maybe people probably think that there are. I love the chemistry thing. I, I kind of chuckled though when Brad said, and a very young Josh Berry. Yeah, oh no, he's not. I think not. he's the oldest guy there now. I think he just turned 33. He is. So, he's yeah. 33 years mm -hmm. old. Yep. A young career for Josh Berry. How about that? <laughs> he's a rookie. You know? Yes. Yeah, he is. And and honestly, look, I know that's what was talked about before Josh Berry uh, got the great opportunity he did with Junior Motorsports that, oh, his time may pass because he's like 27 or 28 years old. And uh, and it didn't. And he's proven his talent in a race car. And I think at 33 years old, he's got at least a good decade ahead of him of competitiveness. But uh, I do think he fits in well with these other drivers. And look, Josh Berry's already been out this past weekend running late models with his new crew chief, Rodney Childers. You know, you talk about building a Bond, a couple of guys from similar backgrounds, just like with Rodney and Kevin as well. But that's really cool. And I, uh, again, I'm I'm pretty optimistic about SHR for next year. Yeah, that was the fall brawl at Hickory um, that you're referring to, Brad. And he finished third for those that uh, that wonder. But um, I th you know what? I didn't even think about that either. You guys are like blowing my mind in this segment because you're right. He's he just turned 33, which I believe puts him as the oldest driver at Stuart Haas Racing. But he'll be the only rookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because Noah, you know, ran a, a season ish, um, and and the other two guys have been in the Cup Series for a little while. So yeah, that's that's kind of funny. I think the one thing that they have to do is find some success to keep sponsors in. Yeah, because they've already lost a biggie. Anheuser Busch yep. left with the uh, vacating Kevin Harvick, and he is now over with Ross Chastain. Well, and they're losing Housewives. Smithfield too, and they're going to lose Smithfield because. Um, and and I just was told in my ear that to Ryan Priest is thirty three. So oh, he, is he, okay. he and Josh okay. Barry are the same of the, age. Of the Stuart mm -hmm. Haas stable share yeah. the same age. Interesting. They're still just they're just babies. Thank goodness we have fact checkers on this yeah. show. You yeah. know, well, <laughs> we need we need all the assistance. <laughs> big we big can budget get. show that we've got here. So anyway, I I just find this an interesting situation. You have got a four car team that does not have but one Cup win among its four drivers heading into next year.
they need some success, and I feel like they need it early on. They do. To try to attract some more money because money makes cars go faster. It does. And, and we have not had the announcement yet. I mean, we've known for months that Josh was going to be in the four car, but we do not know yet who is going to be on that car. Um, so that will certainly be interesting to see what what um, what partners they attract. I think if you're if you're a smart marketer, that's a good guy to attach to. I think so. I, I believe he gets a built-in following. One because he's kind of got a cool persona. Two, he has a little junior pedigree to him now. He does. Mm-hmm. Never underestimate that. If you get associated with the junior brand, even if you're an Xfinity driver. It, it carries over, doesn't it, Brad? Yeah, I think so. I, I think we've seen it for a long, long time. And, you know, quite honestly, it doesn't matter who is driven for them when you start talking about most popular driver things. And, heck, we've even seen all-star fan votes uh, go the way of junior motorsports, um, you know, people who have graduated from that and, and on into Cup. So, yeah, it, it's a good thing. I, and and I, I think a lot of people also like – sort of the blue collar way that Josh Berry has come up and and gotten into the cup series. I mean, he spent a decade running late models for junior motorsports and just fighting his way through. And when the opportunity presented itself in a year that uh, Sam Mayer was not old enough to drive that car and Josh Berry got to start the season, he proved his talent. He, he found victory lane, found victory lane a couple of times that year and got a full-time ride. And that's very appealing, uh, in my opinion. That's very appealing to a lot of the fan base. I think a lot of the diehard NASCAR fans also like Barry because his dad or his parents didn't write a big check to get him a job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you think about his trajectory, and you're right, Brad. Say Sam Mayer's birthday was in January instead of July. We might not ever have known, you know, the potential that Josh Berry would have in in the Xfinity series, let alone the Cup series. So he definitely had to have some stars align um, to to get the opportunities that he has. But I full well believe um, that he has already proven that he deserves them, and he will continue to do that in the number four car for Stuart Haas Racing. I think Barry has a chance to have a bounce back year. He didn't win this year at Junior Motorsports. I think part of it was the distraction of being the first fill in driver for so many other people. Yeah, he did he had he had quite a busy yeah. season uh for sure between um you know filling in for uh for Chase Elliott and you know a bunch of other super sub um you know activities that he had plus the whirlwind of of just knowing that he was going to Stuart Haas racing and and not to mention I mean certainly Junior Motorsports had some wins you know with Justin Algar and Sam Mayer but there was no question either that that program wasn't as good as it has been as a whole in the Xfinity series this past year. 